So welcome again. Um, this is our third installment of the Nano Educators Quarterly Forum. Our topic today is zooming in over Zoom, learning how to use a static electron microscope remotely from your classroom's computer. Um, this forum uh, started as a, really as a collaboration between Mariel Kolker here, a high school teacher from New Jersey, an amazing person, and uh, Daniela Duran at Nano at Stanford, our office, and lots of other people that you see in this call. And uh, it is a joy to see how, how this uh, forum is growing. And I welcome you to invite your friends and colleagues to come join. Uh, a quick agenda for today. Uh, we'll do a quick welcome introductions and some upcoming resources. Then we'll drive, jump right in uh, with Eve and Lauren for our hands-on demonstration for the SEM. And then we'll do a quick wrap up, share some more resources and the upcoming events. And I'll do just a quick introduction. Uh, hi, my name is Maria Fernanda Campa. I'm a staff scientist at the National Nanotechnology Coordination Office. We are uh, one of a handful R&D coordination offices in the federal government. And our role is to really help all the federal agencies uh, coordinate their nanotechnology efforts. And one of our biggest roles is public outreach, engagement, education, and making sure that the resources the government is putting out there reaches you all, uh, taxpayers, teachers, students, everyone. Um, we do this through a variety of ways, including forums like this, uh, public webinars, events, podcasts, and active social media. And uh, we're here to serve you. So if you're looking at ways to incorporate nanoscience or nanotechnology into your classroom and you don't know where to start, please reach out to us and we'll be happy to direct your point to correct resources. Um, we believe in our office that nanotechnology can inspire students and um, we think nanotechnology can help solve lots of societal issues and inspire students to come up with better solutions for their future. Right now, we have a big push uh, with climate change and nanotechnology, and we just launched a Nano for Earth uh, challenge, and we'll have a kickoff workshop uh, this upcoming January, and we welcome all of you and your students to attend. This is a hybrid and free event. We'll have amazing speakers, and um, we want to hear from the students. Uh, it's going to be a dynamic event, and hope you, I hope you can all join. All the um, Resources and, and things I mentioned today are going to be included in your resource package. So you don't have to save links right now. We'll make sure you get them at the end with the recap and the video of this event. Um, there's also some upcoming challenges and, and competitions through the federal government that you could incorporate in your classroom, such as art competitions and uh, storytelling competitions through EPA. Uh, those, some of them have a uh, cash prices, and again, we welcome you all to use them. And just some other quick um, resources. The Nanoscience Summer Institute for Middle School Teachers is uh, open up for applications. The event is July 17th to 21st. Um, this is a paid opportunity, and I understand that it can uh, people can participate virtually, so I encourage you to check it out and share it with your colleagues. We also have uh, our collaborators at NAC, MNTC, and Penn State have nanotechnology professional development opportunities coming up uh, in March, May, and August. Please check out the website and on uh, ways to get involved. And finally, this is a new one. We There's an upcoming RIT for Ju July 10 to August 4th at uh, Stevens Institute of Technology. Uh, Marielle just shared that with me. Um, the focus is going to be uh, sustainable energy and bioengineering. This is also a paid opportunity and um, we will share that resource in the packet. And finally, uh, we've heard uh, from, uh, from you all that you're interested in learning more about how to incorporate climate change and nanotechnology into your, your classroom curriculum. So the next Nano Educators Quarterly Forum, uh, which is scheduled for late January, will be focusing on that topic. We welcome you and um, everyone else who wants to attend and more details will be forthcoming. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to uh, pass the baton to Eve and Lauren to start our demo session today. Unless anyone else, anyone has a question or wants to jump in with something. 
Any questions? Okay, so let's get started then, and we'll have opportunity for more questions uh, I know at the end of the presentation. My name is Yves Terrio, and I'm Program Manager for Education and Outreach at the Qualcomm Institute, UC San Diego. And I'm also the Executive Director for uh, Education and Outreach for the San Diego Nanotechnology Infrastructure, which is a part of NNCI. Uh, and uh, NNCI is actually managed by the NNCO office. Maria is a part of it. Uh, Quinn will soon be a part of it as well. So uh, having said that, <clears throat> um, is it okay? Is it okay to say that, Quinn? Or are you appointed yet? I think you have a period. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's why I turned my head. I'm actually the deputy director now at the NNCO. I started in August and I want to just jump in and I wasn't going to say anything because Mary Maria Fernanda did such a great job, but I started working with this group and I met Mariel, oh gosh, eight years ago. And I'm excited. I've sort of passed the baton, I guess, to Maria Fernanda. But when I was working at the NNCI with Eve and now back at the NNCO, working with teachers is definitely one of my uh, favorite parts and getting to know everyone who supports educators around the uh, nano community. So I'm so excited to see so many people on this tonight. And I've seen Eve do remote sessions or UC San Diego, excuse me, do remote sessions many a time. So you're in for a treat. So again, thank you all for taking the time to learn more about all of this. Thank you, Quinn. Okay, uh, the first thing I would like to do is introduce you to our uh, team, uh, SEM team. Uh, Lauren actually is a departing one. She has worked with us but we'll keep her around a little bit. And Laura and Pratam in the back will take over. So if you have SEM sessions with SDNI, you will see Lauren a little bit, but eventually a lot, Laura, as well as Pratam. So could you please introduce yourself, guys? Yes, of course. Um, good, good afternoon or evening, wherever you guys are. Um, I'm Lauren. I'm with SDNI Nano3 here at UCSD. Um, I graduated this past spring. Um, in nano engineering, and now I'm working at the Salk Institute um, on a project using DNA origami to study proteins and enzymes. Um, so yeah, and then I'm gonna pass the mic to Prof. Um, hello everyone, my name is Pratham, and I'm a second year here at UC San Diego, and my major is mechanical engineering at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Laura Charria. I am studying here at UC San Diego, currently a junior, and I work here at Nano3 at UCSD, and I'm just like super excited to be here. So welcome, everyone. Thank you so much. So uh, you know what I'd like to do, Lauren? The first thing is maybe you could uh, go through uh, the uh, sea sediment sample yourself, okay, like show and tell. And then I will show people how they can get remote control. And then maybe we'll start the, the remote control uh, after that, if it's okay with you. Yeah, sounds good. Um, okay. So if you were here at, at the session last quarter, um, we went through, I went through a lot of the samples and we talked about geckos and butterfly wings and lots of exciting stuff. Uh, but this time we're going to have you guys try to do it. So I think I showed some of you guys this sample last time, but there's some sea sediment. This is sea sediment from um, our very own Scripps Institute of Oceanography by the coast. As you can see the sample, the types of organisms in here are very diverse. Uh, a lot of them are shells that are very symmetric. So, so when you guys when you guys are operating the SEM, you will have control of the magnification and the focus. Um, so, what we usually like to do first is we start at a high or at a low magnification, so very zoomed out, and then you focus at that low magnification. And then you slowly zoom in and you zoom so it's just a little bit out of focus and then you focus. Um, we, we know that the controls might be a little bit difficult to use, but we're here to support you as you do it. Um, and also because the reaction time is kind of slow, uh, we put the SEM when you control it in the fast scan mode 
Uh, and then once you have, uh, you know, um, the best possible image on your side, then uh, Lauren will do a slow scan so that you can get a better quality image. Yes, and we will we will take pictures um, of whatever you guys focus on and send them to you later so that you can keep them. So yeah, this, this sample has a lot of diversity going on, which I think, which is why I chose it for you guys to look through today. Um, so yeah, you have free control to go wherever you want around the sample. And there's lots of, there's lots of shell, shells to look at, interesting sea sediment. Um, so yeah, Eves, I think we can get to yes. passing it off to them. All right, so uh, step by step, right? First, we'll need to uh, know who wants to take control. We cannot have everyone try to control their CSM at the same time. So it will be one at a time. What we will do is we'll deliver to you a personal link, okay, uh, that you will click on. This will actually bring a, a screen that is actually displaying cursor where you can that you can use to control the focus and the zoom, okay? Um, once you have that, reduce the window so that you can toss it in the right-hand side of your screen and still see, uh, you know, Lauren's screen with the SEM uh, on the left-hand side. And then you can simply use the cursor and we can help you, you know, if it, if it goes wild a little bit, uh, we'll, we'll direct you to the process, okay? So um, having said that, who would like to take control of the SEM right now? Oh, by the way, you have also a joystick function. In order to get the joystick function, you can simply click, there's a, a, a radio button that says, you know, um, uh, joystick. If you click on it, you will have basically an arrow that will allow you to click on, depending on the, you know, you can basically direct the arrow. If you want to go to the left, you point the arrow to the left. <laughs> Click on the arrow, it will bring you on the left of the sample. Okay, having said that, uh, who wants to give it a shot? Usually what we do okay, when we have remote session with classes, we, the, the night before we have a session with the teacher to explain all of that, to make sure the teacher knows how to do it in the class so that we don't spend 15 minutes you know, trying to have the kids you know, uh, you know, operational on it. Uh, so right now it's kind of a practice so uh, we apologize for the slow development, but hopefully it will go well. So having said that, who would like to take the control over? Any, any volunteer? You can raise your hand. Um, we have a raised hand over here. Okay. Yes. Okay. So uh, uh, Lauren, can you send, uh, how do you pronounce your name? Ogagare. Ogagare. Yes, Please sir. Please send him a personal li li a link to the controls. Yes. So Gagari, when you receive it, you'll have a big window, reduce the window and put it on the right-hand side of your screen. And uh, mm -hmm. Lauren will actually, actually, the first thing you need, for, okay, let, let's let's do the window. After that, you need to uh, request remote control. That's something we forgot. Okay. Uh, so there is a view option with an arrow on the, on the, on the, on the top. You click on this and request remote control. Once you have that, you will be able to control the SEM. Okay, let me do that. Uh, all right, I have made this smaller. And so all the other participants should see actually what's happening, um, what is triggered by uh, Ogaga Ray. Okay, were you able to get on the link that I sent? Yes, I have done that and I have made it small. Okay. But I'm trying to, uh, okay, let's do this. I exit full screen. Okay. So now I can have this screen side by side. Okay. Uh, all right, great. I have, I have those two screens now. And did you request remote control from the view options? Uh, so on the very top, you should see view options. Maybe I need to make you co-host first. Let me try that. Let me try that, participants. There's a question in the meantime. Is 
This yes. microscope, I guess, is located there at your university. Is that correct? Sorry, can you repeat your question? Uh, where is the microscope located and what is it? It is, is in it? our nano tree facility at UCSD. Uh huh. And is this more than just one of the small remote microscopes? Is this a, a it's better? It's a size 500. Okay. It's but, not small. <laughs> right. And so did you guys develop this interface or, or is this Zeiss? Uh, actually, we uh, we develop it, but it's from Zeiss. Uh, okay, I see. I so see Zeiss allowed us to uh, enter their, their firmware. All right, so I requested the control. Okay, okay. I approved you. Okay, okay, so you should be able to control now. Uh, so try playing with the um, magnification arrow first. Yeah, and go. There are two arrows, one double arrow and one single. Oh, okay, with so the single I, I'll, one. I'll try with a single one. Okay. Oh. Yep. Excellent. Getting there. Nice. Oh, okay. Wow. Cool. Very nice. Oh, yes. Hold on. Okay, so now that you've zoomed in, um, try to play with the focus knobs. <laughs> Hold on a second, please. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I have to make this bigger to mute. Okay, okay now yeah, that is a little bit busy, okay? So what do you say, the, track, the focus? Okay. Yeah, so now that you've, you've zoomed in a little and you can tell it's like a little bit out of focus, but see if you can adjust the focus knob so that it brings it into focus. Yeah, so you need to go the other way around. Okay. It was the wrong direction. That is totally okay. That's how we figured out. Nice. Oops. Yeah. The, unfortunately, the uh, we need to uh, improve a little bit the uh, okay. the triggering. It's a little too fast, but uh, hey, that's looking pretty good. It looks good right now. Can you do a slow scan? Uh, yes, Lauren. And then we'll we'll save that picture for you. Naya, hold on. Oh boy. Do you want to try to zoom in um, on something else in here? Okay. All right. Let me zoom in. Okay. Pick something to zoom. And then I believe if you want to travel, if you want to like travel on the sample, you can drag in the screen and and move, or use the joystick. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Can you mute me on your end, please? Because I lost my screen here. Which one are you trying to look at? I think that the uh, he is still muted, so you can unmute yourself. All right, I want to look at this one, the, the one that is towards the left, the middle uh, left towards the left, yeah. This one here? Yes, that one. Okay. Okay, try zooming in. Okay. Or increase the magnet. Yeah. Okay, now try focusing. Ooh. Okay, so the wrong way. Wrong way. Wrong way. <laughs> okay, that should. Hey, that's looking pretty good. Yeah, that's. <laughs> we have a question in the chat. Um, are we? Yeah, these are corals? not uh, corals. They are actually uh, 
small pieces of uh, prehistoric phytoplankton and zooplankton. <laughs> Please just mute me. Please. All right. Um, did you want to look at something? Did you want to look at anything else, or should we pass? That's the... fine. You can uh, take me off the controls. Let me attend to. Okay. You did great. Good job. Right, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Hold on. Hold on. Please All right. So now we need uh, another volunteer, I guess. So just raise your hand via, uh, you know, the uh, reaction uh, icon, and we will. Uh, if I can't figure out how to raise my hand, uh, but I like to volunteer. To to raise your hand, you click on the reaction button, and you see at the bottom it says raise hand. There we go. Okay, okay. Wait, who who is that who would like to give it a this shot? This is Anna, Anna Galliano with um, yeah, University okay. of Anna, Okay, uh, please, uh, Lauren, send the uh, the link to Anna Sanchez. Okay, and then um, if you guys noticed, I switched samples, so now she will be taking a look at pollen. Excellent. So let me make you also, Anna, uh, a co-host. Uh, let's see here, make co-host, boom. Here we go. So the first thing you do now, again, you uh, call the program, you have a window, reduce it, put it on the right hand side, and then on the view option up on top, uh, request remote control. Okay, let's see. Um... I don't see a request. Yes, yeah, so if you go on view option, it says you are viewing Lauren Takigusi's uh, screen uh, in green on top. Next to that, you have view option. If you click on the arrow, there's an option request remote control. Am I doing a screen share? No, no, no. On oh. top, do you see on top the green that says you are viewing Lauren Takigusi's screen? Yes. On the very top. Oh, this is Baby Shark. I do see that. I have okay. view options. Then you have view options. You have an remote. arrow. Click on the got arrow it. next to view option. Yeah. Oh, I got your request. Okay. okay. Excellent. All right. So now you should be able to click on the cursor to um, amplify, to magnify. So, okay, and then do you have the projector screen and the control screen side by side? Okay, so if you go on the control screen at the bottom of the left hand side, you see cursor. One is for magnification, the other one is, is for focus. So you need first to start clicking on the single arrow to the right to amplify a little bit. Yeah. Okay, I got okay. it. Yep. <laughs> So now you can try to focus a little bit at that magnification level. So that's the other, uh, that's the second one. the other way, am I? Okay. Yep, yep, getting oh, there. Very cool. Oops. Oh, a little too much. Back. And yep. it might be the best you can do on, on your side, but um, yeah, so now you can focus again. Okay, so I wanna go more to, towards the right. I already lost that. To okay. the right? Okay. How do I do that? So, you could drag on the screen. I mean, oh, I can? Yeah. Yeah, so what, what you need to do if you want to play with left and right, you can click on the uh, radio button next to where it says um, joystick. Once you click on it, the joystick will pop up, and then you can use the orient the joystick the way you want. And once you have the orientation, you want, let's say to the right, you click on it oh, and to the right. Baby Shack. Hi, Kevin. I saw your comment. Um, we we are trying to. Oh, uh oh. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, we we're trying to integrate it with more teachers to use. Um, really? We can honestly we can do it either in a formal or informal setting because all they'll need is a Zoom and a computer that the ch the kids can use, um, and then. Hopefully we could have sessions like this one where they can take control 
and take pictures of samples that either we have or if they want to provide one, that also would be cool too. Uh, that that might be a question for Eves. Eves, do you know what the price? Yeah, would a size be? 500 uh, with everything loaded like we have it. It's half a million dollars. Did you maybe mean, mean how much it would cost uh, for you guys to use it? Oh, That's to free. use it? Well, yeah, well, I mean, we don't charge, right, for education and outreach. Um, if you were an outside commercial, you know, company, uh, I believe it's $80 an hour. But yeah, I, I would like to clarify that. So it, this is free for all teachers to use in their classrooms. Um, you, you just have to sign up online. Um, there's, uh, I, I guess they can either sign up directly with you guys at UCSD, but there's also a network called RAIN uh, that has uh, instruments across the country that can do this type of sessions. So as you can see, this pollen here that we're looking at is very spiky. Um, and that turns out to have a, a really good advantage for bees that, or for the flower is smart to have this pollen that is spiky because the bees, it sticks to the bees hair as they carry it and spread the pollen. It looks like a phase. <laughs> That's really cool. It also kind of looks my, like- uh, Just a second, I just put my email in the chat for the ones who would like to have a session with the class. I think we're on, 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 the, on one that is kind of a hyper saturated a little bit, uh, Lauren. I think yeah. it's better to find another one because this one of usually is. Yeah, uh, let me try something real quick. Can you tell the group uh, what it means to be have a sample be hyper uh, saturated? Uh, it 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 depends. It's um, it depends on the material itself. Uh, so sometimes you know the the samples will absorb you know a lot of energy. And then you have, uh, you know, white reflections like that. Mm -hmm. um, so you need to avoid that as much as possible. Especially organic samples. They're, we, we get these images by shooting electrons down at the samples. And a lot of organic samples, uh, like pollen included, don't conduct electricity on their own. So yes, well, we, yeah, we right. sputter that's coat them. Yeah, that's something we didn't mention is that uh, the biosamples are first dried, and then we also stain them with some metal so that the surface can uh, can be appropriate for uh, an electron microscope. Anna, do you want to zoom in on one of these ones over here? These I think the one in the middle that is darker a little bit could be a good one. Yeah, that's looking nice. Does the user have control of some of the other features that you would in person on the microscope, like I don't know, coloration, not, 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 and not, not like remotely. That. No, uh, it's okay. too dangerous, right? Because you know they could right. control the elevation of the, the the template, which could crash the you know the lenses. Uh -huh. uh, so yeah. there, there's a limit. There's also something that is pretty tedious. The X Y orientation uh, is very very tedious to adjust. It would be a waste of time to do that. So I mean. If we were to provide, you know, uh, an electron microscopy technical training to uh, graduate students, let's say, we might want to push this, but right now it has been mostly used for show and tell with, um, you know, K to twelve and community college. So when you move around the sample in X and Y, you're not moving the stage. You know, we're, we're, in. when I say X and Y, it's uh, it's the adjustment of the um, the, the electron beam. Okay. Oh. Okay, I'm going to take a picture of this. It's pretty cool. Are you, are you able to change the angle at all? So if you had like a mem structure and you wanted to, someone wanted to look at it at different angles, yes. can the user, yes. can yep. the user do that? The remote uh, user? Oh, uh, well, not to remotely, but of course, right. you know, the Zeiss can do it if you're in the, on site. Right. So okay. Good job, Anna. So did Thank you, you. Did you do a slow scan of this, uh, Lauren? Yeah, I did. I, yeah. I got the yeah. photo. Am I giving up remote control? Is that what you want me to do? 
So uh, yes, now we will pass and well, so yes, you need to say uh, give up remote control. Okay, is that done? Super. All right, so who else would like to give it a shot? So maybe we can change the sample too, uh, Lauren? Yeah, I'm changing the sample. Oh, the short scale, that's, that's a good one. That's okay. a good one. I'm gonna blur it out of focus. Do many people send in their own samples? It happens, but uh, it's rare, but we would love to have more of these. Uh -huh. So for the teachers that are interested in sending samples in, do you have any recommendations of what type of samples are better or how they should collect for, those samples? For us, it has to be dry. As mm -hmm. long as it is dry, uh, we can pr pr pretty much do everything. Anywhere from toilet paper to uh, biological sample, bee flies, butterflies, um, MEMS, electronic devices, and so forth. So really, it could be used for any... Uh, different topic if they want to incorporate the microscope. That, that's project. correct, yes. Oh, we, we, I see a volunteer, Katie? Yes, Katie. Okay, let me make you uh, yes, a co-host. <laughs> okay, I'll drop you the link in just a sec. All right, so you're a co-host now. Okay, I sent it over. Oh yeah, um, shedded snake skin and bugs would be cool samples if you happen to have any of those. Um, also, Christina sent me a message. She said it would be it would be really helpful if we could look at some materials on the nano rather than the micro scale. Perhaps some materials or layered technologies that reveal how these microscopes are particularly powerful. I think that's definitely a really good point. Um, we we do have some samples of like camera pixels or MEMS devices, but I, or we can, we, we can definitely arrange showing them to you guys. Um, I just picked some of these more like biological samples because I'm thinking about like what, what kids might be particularly interested in. And actually um, at the last session, I showed a gecko foot and we were, we were able to see nanostructures in the foot. Um, on the, as the butterfly wings, right? The wings. Yes, on the nanometer scale. Um, and I think there's a lot of inspiration that us, us and kids can get from nature's nanostructures because first they, they know how to make it a lot better than we do. So um, yeah, there's definitely interest in looking at stuff like the butterfly wings and how light can come from structure rather than like a chemical pigment. But yeah, like if, if you wanna see some of the MEMS or the pixels next time, I'd be glad to show you guys some. Do, do we have the butterfly wings today? Um, we do. Can I ask where I um, select to get control? Uh, so you go on top where it says you are invited, uh, sorry, you are viewing Lauren Takiguchi screen in, re in green. Next door, there's view options. You click on the arrow next to view options. And then you'll see request remote control as an option. Yeah, Christina, um, we, we'll, we'll definitely have these engineered things in other sessions as well. I mean, we could have a session 100% on electronics. and uh, Yeah. But today, if we can show the butterfly wings, we will see nanostructures. Yes, but um, I also for... Also for things where you can see nanostructures, um, I, I'm not entirely convinced that the, mic the remote control microscope is able to resolve that because um, on our end over here, we have some stigmators that help focus when it's um, at pretty high magnification on the nanometer scale. So um, it might, at the moment, it might not be completely feasible for the remote access. Yeah, maybe the trigger is too coarse. Yeah, we would need to make the trigger finer or add stigmators or something. Yeah, we'll work on that, actually. It's probably some programming, but we'll yeah. try to do that. So okay. is that. Is that something you work Sorry, on? I'm not where I can select 
sharing the screen or taking control. So, sorry, can you repeat the question? I'm not seeing where it says I'm sharing um, Lauren's screen and where I can take control through the link. Okay, so if you click on the link, what you should see is a window appearing that you'll need to reduce and uh, toss in your right hand side, the right hand side of your screen. Yes. Okay. Have you done that? Yes. Okay. Um, did you request a remote control yet? No, I, I, that's where I'm not sure okay. where I'm So look at the very top of your screen. You will okay. see in green, it says, you are viewing Lauren Takeyushi's screen. It doesn't say that. You don't see that on top of your screen. It's probably because the window that you called is what is uh, hiding it. Make the, the window that you just uh, called when you clicked on the link smaller mm -hmm. and put it really on the right-hand side of your screen so that it doesn't take more than... 25% uh, to 30% of your screen. You should be able then to see the left-hand side of the screen with the sample, the SEM uh, you know, uh, image that is yes. currently short skin. And on top, you have to see uh, the green um, message about Lauren's uh, screen. Okay, yes. Okay, all right. Now on the right-hand side of that, you have view options with an arrow. Click on the arrow and you'll have the option. Okay. Did you do that? Got yes. it. Okay. All right. So now if you click on the cursor for magnification that are located on the left bottom corner of the window that you call, um, you will be able to magnify uh, the picture that we see right now. Don't go too fast. Okay. Click one, one click at a time. And when you get to a critical point, then you can start um, zooming, okay. focusing. Sorry. Just a comment: um, if any of you guys end up if you guys end up using this remote session with your classes, either either in a formal or informal setting, um, we would love we we would love for you guys to give us some input on what kind of samples you think your kids or audience might enjoy seeing. Um, yeah, we we would love to show as many different samples as you think would be needed would be interesting to your audience. Um, yeah, we have nanoparticles different types of metal na nanocubes, <laughs> dinosaur bones. That would be really cool. Did the graphene yeah. sample work out? The yeah. The so I actually just found out that um, it, it, they just like processed it on the chip. So I think next time it, we will be able to show it. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. The graphene is difficult. Um, we won't be able to do that remotely, but we can show and tell. It's very, very tough. Yeah. In fact, the uh, you know investigating a little bit, I discovered that SEM for graphene doesn't work very well. I mean, mm -hmm. you're talking about one layer, right? Yeah. So uh, we need TEM, and the TEM uh, needs special holder for graphene. So we're working on it, unfortunately. And I, I think this is a good opportunity to mention that the ring network, the remote access to instrumentation uh, network that this uh, uh, event it's also part of, has other microscopes. So if the SEM, if you're interested in SEM, clearly this is an option, but there's other tools that you can incorporate into your classroom lectures and you can check that out on the resource package that we'll include at the end. Yeah, personally, I think um, after using some different microscopes, I think the main, or the main thing that is a drawback about the SEM is that you can't do samples in like their native state. So in liquids, um, which a lot of biological samples are suspended in liquids. Um, but with the AFM or the atomic force microscope, you can see that. We have two raised hands. Oops, what happened? I have a Sorry. question. Uh, do you have any uh, uh, the biological sample like the cell? Can you look at the cell structure? What? 
I, I could not hear the question, sorry. Uh, do you have the examples where you have the look, look at the cell structure? Yeah, that would be biological, wet biological sample, right? Uh, we, we, we cannot do that with the SEM. The okay. SEM is not uh, built for biological samples like that, unfortunately. Did he ask about cells? Yeah. Oh, okay. So we can do cells with the SEM, but it's kind, it's kind of complicated because we'd have to dry it out. We'd have to dry out the sample really fast um, and then sputter coat it with a metal so that it is conductive and we can see electrons bouncing off of it. Um, but I think, yeah. So, but I think the AFM, with the AFM, you can do it in liquid and you can see cells, which is pretty cool. But yeah, that's what, what if can I request for that? Sorry, what was that? Uh, so I thought that uh, we could request the session to look at the cell or tissue. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm sure we can. I'm sure we can prepare a sample of cells. Okay. Um, it will be dried out though. So um, yeah, one of the drawbacks is it, things might be distorted when we dry it out and then put it in a high vacuum. So it's not going to be in its native cell state, but we could see what it looks like. But generally you use the golden particles, right? Golden plates. You so, put the sample, the tissue on the gold, gold, uh, gold disc. So, sorry, I, I think the connection is kind of weird. Could you, would you mind repeating the question? Yeah, so the biological sample, like a tissue, is generally put on the gold discs, which goes into the electron microscope, right? <laughs> not, not necessarily. I don't think you need gold. But again, this Zeiss 500 was built for, uh, was actually purchased for material science. So it does very poorly on biological samples. I thought that we could not do it, but uh, you know there are some other microscopes that are w better suited for cells. So um, that that's that's my take on it. Maybe AFM could do something, uh, mm -hmm. but again, the AFM that we have, Lauren, right for cells is still not uh, ideal. So yeah, I mean, um, I use the AFM to look at DNA origami that I make in my lab. So, but um, one of them is working out pretty well. I can see the shapes that I made. Um, so can we, can we take care of her? Uh, oh, is Katy done actually? Uh, yes, I am. Okay. Thank you. All right, all right, super. Okay, so uh, who wants to uh, control the microscope? One more person. Should we, uh, uh, should we try the butterfly, uh, Lauren? Yeah, sure. I, th I think, um, yeah, we can, we can give it a try, but I doubt that the controls will be able to focus on like the finest details. Um, but yeah, we can give it a try. Let's see. Also, I, Richard, I see your question. Why does the sample need to be dry? Um, that's because for the, to run the electron microscope, it's, it's actually under a really high power vacuum um, in order to take the measurements. So yeah, anything that's wet can damage the components inside the microscope and also cause contamination which would be kind of bad. Um, I saw a raised hand, April. Did you get to ask your question? Or do you want it to volunteer? I wanted to ask a question um, for the AFM. Is, yeah. that, um, can, is there any remote access to that? And I wanted to know, is there any way to see some of the work that you were doing uh, with the AFM maybe? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I'd, I'd be happy to send it, um, send like images that I've taken inside the, in like an email or something, maybe later. Um, but yeah, if you guys are interested in seeing that. You can send them to me definitely. and I can add them to the resource package. Oh, cool. Okay. And did you answer the question about, is there a remote access? I'm sorry. Oh, no. Um, Eves, do you happen to know if there's remote access for that? Well, not for us right now. We could probably uh, develop that, but currently we do not offer it. But the RAIN network has a few AFM if you, want, if you are interested in that. 
Yeah, we, we have an AFM at Penn State that we can do remote on if you guys are interested. I am, thank you. Which AFM do you guys have, if I may ask? Uh, we have a Vico, so it's an Innova. Oh, is it the is it um the Vico multi mode? Yep, yeah, it's a multi mode. It's it's a pretty user friendly tool. Um, but yeah, I, I've used a lot of the Nano Surf AFMs as well, but this one in particular is uh it's pretty good. It's pretty good for remote. So yeah, if you, if you'd like to do a remote on the AFM, uh, please contact me. Uh, I'll put my email here in the chat, and uh, I can help you get that set up. Yeah, we we tried um we tried a nano surf one too, um, in a park. But I still like the Vico the best. Yeah, I've I've had many um, fights with nano surfs over the years. So. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you use the Flex? No, we're we're using like their. It's the 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 drive. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Bless your soul. Uh. Well. We, tr we, we tried it out, but I don't know if we're going to actually use it. Oh, that. you just demoed it. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Who is, uh, who's going to take control next? Uh, maybe Lauren, you should kind of get a little bit to it first, because I think it would be tough to uh, start from the cursors. So this is the Morpho butterfly wing that we've shown in past demos. I think the ones at the bottom are more quality a little bit. If you want to get into the substructures. Oh, down here. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. So yeah, to get these little structures, we kind of need fine control. Okay, maybe from there, someone could take it. Okay. Um, does anyone want to take it? Uh, I think Ahmed has his hand raised. Is it Sifak Ahmed? Oh, sorry. I, I, I asked the question. Oh, you have a question. Okay. No, I already asked the question. Oh, you already asked your question. Okay. All right. So nobody else wants to try. <laughs> That's a tough one. So um, maybe what what we can do here, uh, Lauren, is uh, try to get uh, you know maybe very very uh, high amplification to see the details there. Oh, okay. Maybe make a measurement. Lauren and Eves, if I may ask, ask a question. Um, yeah, this, go for it. The uh, butterfly wing being organic, that needs to be dried as well. Can you explain how that works and, and what that would look like? I, I'm just trying to think about applications for us, and that would be more of a like what's been asked, looking at cell structure, uh, cancerous cell versus healthy cell. Um, yeah, I mean, yes, yeah, so, so, some microscopes are well designed for biological samples. Uh, the cryo, uh, you know, SEM allows you to um, basically uh, freeze slices of a cell and, um, and look at them, but you need the proper setup for this. If we were to introduce a sample that is wet in this SEM sample, 
when we do the vacuum, water will infiltrate the, the system and would break the, the SEM. So that's why we need to use dried. But when you look at butterfly wings, it doesn't matter if it's dry because what you want to see are the structures on the surface of the um, of the of the butterfly that are responsible for the generation of these uh, these colors, right? Structural colors. So the water not being there is not is not an issue. Thank you. There's a question in the chat. Is uh, the three kV the lowest voltage this SEM can reach? No, um, we can do we can do lower voltages, which is what we would have to do for the graphene when we take a look at it. Um, but yeah, we can also go higher too, depending on people's preference. So I wonder, uh, Lauren, if we could take a, kind of a measurement on the very, very fine structures that we see here. Yeah, like a vertical or something. See the ones that are kind of uh, more like... Um, like this. Horizontal. Yeah. I, like the white, the white filament that are there. I would be I would be uh, interested to see how wide they are. This this is probably in the uh, low nanometer range. No, not this one. If you go on top, right, you have like the little arrays that are white on top. Mm, like here. This is actually kind of a distance between two bigger structures, but if you look at the top of it. Yeah, this doesn't doesn't do uh, doesn't do good here. We kind of lost the resolution a little bit. Oh no no wait. We can, we can. Yeah, so, so, so what I'd like to see is how, how wide they are. So take the measurement in the other direction, right? Instead of the length of it, kind of the thickness of it. Here. Yeah. 300 nanometer. I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to take a picture of it. I'm going to rotate it a bit. So the amplification uh, can only be done um, on site. So someone that is doing this remotely wouldn't be able to go as slow as you're doing, or or could they? Um, I don't think because I don't think the the controller on the remote thing is is suited yet for fine tuning. Okay. Yeah. So this would be extremely difficult. I mean, it's not impossible, but. But for example, if you are supporting the session with, with a classroom and they wanted to go deeper, you could take control at that point and, and help them um, get into the nanostructures of things. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we do. Okay. Yeah, this is large, but the width of it is is definitely in the nanometer range. Yeah, the width of it is what, um, or the the nanometer width. So four hundred sixty eight nanometers is, if you look on the visible light spectrum, it is a color, and um, this is kind of how the morpho butterfly. So the morpho butterfly has this brilliant blue color, mm -hmm. um, as you might remember. So yeah, it. This, these structures, these nanostructures that are inherent in the butterfly's wing 
take the light and diffract it. Um, so it it gives off blue light. And that it's able to do that because of these small crevices that are in the wing um, that can absorb certain wavelengths or emit certain, scatter certain wavelengths. Very cool. You didn't load the uh, optical card, huh? Oh, the optical card. We could try that. We can uh, wrap wrap up the session with that the electrical, the optical card, so they okay. can see a uh, non biological sample. Sure. And we have a uh, last three minutes left. So if you have any questions on how to sign up, how to use this resource in your classroom, please let us know. Can we request a session? I, I uh, actually attended it late. Can we request a session of our class? I couldn't hear the question. Can you type it in the chat room? Uh, the question uh, was, is how can they uh, request a session for their class? Oh, okay. So I, yeah. put, my, I put my email uh, in the in the okay. chat room. If you want a session okay. with us, you can email me. And the RAIN network also has a link uh, where you make a request and it will be directed to one of the sites that offer it. So Zach, okay. do you want to enter the link for the request uh, via RAIN? I you just know? did. It's okay. uh and 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 Zach also put his uh, email if they want to reach out to him directly. Um, at the end of the session, um, tomorrow in in the next few days, we'll send send up the this uh recording, the Zoom recording, and a package with everything we've discussed, with the links and instructions on how to sign up and use those resources. So it's easier for you all to use them. You're welcome. I will also put my email in the chat if you guys need to contact me for anything. I think the optical card is at the bottom of it there, Lauren. Yeah, yeah. I'm just focusing, um, I'm focusing more on like, or I'm, I'm focusing the microscope on like the stuff first before I zoom in. Yeah. It's here. Okay, we're getting closer. Lauren, a question for you. How oh, long yeah. did it take you to work the electron microscope so well? Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, I've been doing this for a, I think a little less than a year it was when I first started with Eves. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for your interest in uh, in bringing this stuff to students. I wish I knew about nanotechnology when I was younger, but I th I think it's a great endeavor to bring it to students. So here are here are um, here's a grid of pixels, like the ones that are in your camera, your phone cameras. Let's see, we'll try to focus a little more. Um, these are 
camera pics, these are like individual pixels. So when you have a picture, like a digital picture on your phone, each it's actually comprised of individual squares called pixels. Um, but because our cameras are so high resolution now, um, we can't actually see pixels because there's so many of them and they're so tiny. But yeah, I guess. So when you buy your cell phone and it tells you that many megapixels, well, these are individual pixels. Yes. Can we uh, measure uh, how, how wide they are, uh, Lauren? Sure, I'm just um, fo trying to focus it a little better. And I think after that, we can wrap up the session so people can uh, continue with their afternoons. Okay, I'll just focus a little bit more. It is such a calming image, right? <laughs> the pixels? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, if any of you guys grew up playing some of those older retro um, video games like Super Mario 64, you, you could call those old. I, I, I actually <laughs> played that game too. So I'm, I am, I, I'm part of that era as well. <laughs> See, um, Christina says, what material are the pixels comprised of? So usually they're comprised of semiconductor metals. Um, and that is because they, why won't this measure? That is because they, um, they have electron hole pairs that are a certain distance apart. Um, and it makes for efficient energy transfer, which is what the pixels have to do when they're when the screen's changing. Okay, sometimes our measurement tool is a little bit weird. Um, This is very calming though. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> well, while you figure out that one, any last questions before we sign off? Okay, we're all the just question, waiting. My, my question is, uh, what is the turnaround time between uh, a request and then when you can actually get it to depends, it depends on the sites right but for us at the UCSD we need uh, two weeks in advance okay and uh, then we can schedule you the measurement tool okay oh, thank you I'll try it now I hope all of you can join us in our next uh, oh. Indicators quarterly forum ah. um, oh there you go thanks so it is relatively bigger, yeah? Yeah. This dimension might be in the high. Yeah. yeah. It's micro. Okay, thank you guys. Great um, job, Lauren. Um, but Great yeah, if you, if you guys have any samples you want us to look at, we'd be happy to take a look at them. We would Thank also you, love new samples. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Eve, for, for leading this session. And I want to remind everyone that we do this uh, quarterly. The next session is in, in, in January, and we'll be talking about climate change and nanotechnology. I hope to see you all there. Have a good afternoon.